Oh, man. And I knocked your mic around. Too. See what happens when you're monkeys are actually tendons. physically present? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so don't worry. But anyway. Hey, who's that guy without the mustache? I know. I got to get. I gotta fix that. You got to update that. Oh, shut up. <laughs> see, he's not actually <laughs> resting his cheek on his fist. That fist is coming right at your face. It's, that's the last yeah. thing you see. I'm punching it, myself. Is that what you're saying? No, you're punching yourself, yourself for not having a mustache. I'm punching myself for not having a mustache. You, yeah. And you hit yourself so hard you knocked out. You knocked yourself out I knocked, for like six months. And I punched you woke myself up, and I knocked the mustache off. Is what you're saying? No, you, wo- no. you knocked yourself out when you woke up six months later. You had an epic mustache. Right. Maybe it's okay. both. All right. And we're Welcome. Back. <laughs> Way of the Brush Conversations, episode two. I'm here today with Reziel. You've probably seen him in the chats and the comments, talking away, sharing his opinion on this or that, and. Generally, being a monkey, of course, and so here we are today with Reziel. Say hello to everybody. This is we're, we're putting we're basically putting a face to the name, and so here he is. He's getting I don't know. He's getting his dumbbell. He's getting ready. No, no, my uh, phone's going off. Oh. So, <laughs> hello to the monkeys, the monkeys. Monkeys. Monkey. A <laughs> main wargaming elite and not so elite. And so feel free. <laughs> tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, your handle, Reziel. Yep. First name is? Uh, my name is Ryan, actually. Ryan. There we go. It's actually my middle name, but that's what I go by. Okay. Well, we'll I'll so, call you Ryan from now on. Yeah. That's me. Not, not the one in the... There's another Ryan in the chat, so actually, I've seen. Yeah, Ryan Ironwolf is another one, but maybe we'll get to him later. Usually on the handle, I get to... Uh, most people just say... They just say Rez. Rez. And, well, like, like Ultimate Rez. So Ultimate Rez, yep. Earlier, I was uh, asking him about his name, <laughs> which he said was some type of product. Name. Yeah, some type of... Uh, Video card, I believe, is what he said. Yeah, video, you got it from a video card or something. Now, Reziel, where did that name come from? Yeah, well, mine, actually, I did some religious studies when I was younger. So I got into a lot of, uh, like, different uh, lore for Christianity and Judaism and right. Gnosticism. And so it's angelic lore and stuff like that. So I got really into studying uh, the angelic hierarchy at one point. I just really, I don't, you know, maybe maybe it's the thing with war gamers is that we're either OCD or very detail-oriented especially when we're in a model and painting. Right. Yeah. So I focus on one aspect, right, of religious studies. and just. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, no. And it... Since then, though, yeah, I have to do uh, angelic names for a bunch of crazy stuff. And it really works well for space marines, actually. Oh, yeah, well, the whole 40K thing, right, is it's all just dripping with Christianity in it all over the place. Like, yeah. everything. The imperial cult in yeah. 40K is, is basically Christianity. So... It kind of is, yeah. yeah. And you, I think recently um, uh, Matt was talking about, somebody asked him about, uh, you know, the lore and stuff like that, and he had to, he had to bring in the Narnia example, right? So, uh, and I was, like, uh, I was like, oh, well, yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> but I think even with the Dark Angels, you're saying you're playing Dark Angels, right? Yeah, no, Cause, my, my, cause my really first see- love in 40K and the biggest, the biggest one, the Almighty Dark Angels, I think they get underrated a lot. The, the name, it's, the name, uh, Seems to fit really well because I think even that one of the Primarchs or one of the lead guys is Azrael, isn't it? Something, something yeah, like that. Yeah, It's quite symbolic. So it's it seems like it's a really good fit for the army that you chose too. Wouldn't work for orcs so well. No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't. They do. They do use a lot of um, angelic based names, but a lot of the, you know a lot of the Marine chapters do. There's mixtures of different ones, um, and uh, it's I think Games Workshop right. Their their tactic for creating names for things. It's not consistent, is it? <laughs> no. <Is> it like- <laughs> well, it all depends on where they're uh, they're ripping off or influenced from, because <laughs> well, because like even 40k, like the the notion of 40k is is directly ripped from uh, Frank Herbert, uh, okay. Dune, right? And I love that movie. Yeah, Dune. Which, yeah, Dune's I'm great. Um, but I, I tried to read. You know how sometimes you just can't read an author. It's, you want to do, and you try, and you try, and you try, but you can't get their style. And that was Frank Herbert for me. I was really wanted to. But. Yeah. So I get what uh, you're saying. Tolkien is another one. It's kind of yeah. hard. Especially for North Americans. That uh, Just because t- it's the old English uh, type. Tolkien old... needed an editor. Well, yeah. My phone's um, going off. Uh-oh. Sorry. Oh, no. Drew? <coughs> Maybe Rez is calling you. Yeah. His phone went off, too. Uh, no. <laughs> you guys are messaging you. <laughs> Stop messaging each other. Gosh. LOL, OMG. You darn kids in your, t- in your telephone. Uh, now, I, I like, I'm, I'm looking at, the, at your feed right now, and I'm liking how you have a big skull in the cupboard up in your background. And it looks like... I, that's, that's, uh, that's one of my pieces of artwork. 
I made that. Oh, really? Okay, well, look, please, Ooh. please share. Yes, make a tutorial. Please share. Uh, let me, let, can we see the skull? I want to see the skull. Where? Oh, this? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about... No, no, this. I didn't make this. Sorry. <laughs> this? No, actually, this. No, this. this. That, that was the anniversary gift. Yeah. This was no, my I'm butler. Sure about my, uh, my little avatar. No, this This is, was my uh, first girlfriend. Yeah. Actually, was, <laughs> she said no. Because... She, she said no. <laughs> Anyway, okay, sorry. Wait, are you a Shakespearean no, actor? Are you are you the are you the under are you the uh, grave digger? Yeah, no. Crypt keeper. Okay, sorry. Okay, skull, go. Yeah, no. So um, like I was telling you guys um, before, actually, I'm really interested in doing as much as I can. Get that you know that's that's cheap and innovative, of course, to help out. A lot of people are interested in that, so I'm always looking out for stuff that's going to help me out in wargaming or anything really, even decorating or whatever strikes my eye. So I'm walking through Walmart. And um, I had to get some baby stuff, and they haven't had the, the stuff. It's like, you know, whatever supplies for your Dr. Genies or whatever crap. And it's right next to uh, the pet section. And I look over, and it's all the aquarium stuff. Uh -huh. And I see these aquarium bits. So this is actually for to go into an aquarium. And it's got, like, a hole in the back for, you know, for your fish to swim through. They have all sorts of stuff in there. And they have, like, the SpongeBob houses and all that. Right. But... I was looking at it, and there's actually some really good, cheap wargaming materials for like table, for, like terrain in the aquarium section. Right. I was got a little bit concerned where you're going with that when you talk about <laughs> skulls in the baby yep. section. What the heck, Walmart? Do you go? Yeah, what, 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 what Walmart is that? I thought maybe it was Exhibit A in your uh, in your trial. And the, hole, yeah, and the hole in the back of the skull was yeah. really concerning me too. No, what is? So yeah, this is my. Uh, my cubby. Your cubby? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in a little tiny apartment here, and so... And so the wife lets you have that little cubby? Well, it wasn't like that. I had a... I had a... It's too, so I have... Yeah. I had a, a whole room. Yeah. For, for wargaming, painting... Manliness. Property. Yeah. Man your, cave. Man, your man cave is now a man cupboard. It became a, a boy... A, a baby boy room. Yeah. yeah. Are those uh, are those box games in the bottom corner there? What is it now? Are those box games in the the corner there, like the uh, against the wall? In the in the in the cabinet. That shelf. Two lo two shelves below the skull. To your right. This. Or those yeah. books. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, they're these, colorful and This neat. is like most of my codexes, and um, I've got the the old How to Paint Citadel book series. And what's what's opposite them? That is um, my long term paint storage. Oh. Oh, okay. And, my, and then my Infinity Army is actually resting on top of that. Oh. So, so I do play Infinity as well. Oh. Not, not I can. Infinity's even ridiculously more rare than. Right. Yeah. If you can, if you can have a hard time getting like, getting a game of forty k in, I can only imagine what Infinity is. There's there's only one player for Infinity in my area. Jeez. Uh, yeah. what, what what's the population like in your area? Well, it's actually not bad. Uh, you know, but the there's not. I guess it's not diverse enough to support a lot of. Okay. Arts and hobby. Um, it's a lot of recreational stuff. Area, which is uh, south of Knoxville, and so, and I've yeah, actually made a lot of attempts um, to find people through the net and try to like coordinate and um, sort of get a get a thing going. You know, like a like a gaming cadre group, those types of stuff. Yeah, start a club basically. Oh, start a club, and um, but it's been very difficult. And so uh, stores don't last very long in my area, and so I go I go about an hour hour and a half to get to like a, a Hobby Lobby or a Hobby yeah, Town and say. Gotcha. Um, into the Knoxville, Tennessee area. And, uh, yeah. Which is fine. There, there, there is sort of a community there, but oh. a lot of the players I met, they weren't, um, I guess, as friendly as I'd like a lot of times. Um, right. Yeah. Some, were, some were and some weren't. So the ones that I could get more games with, um, they're the reason like why I sort of dislike Blood Angels. <laughs> <laughs> because it was back that in back. Edition, it was like a big deal. Like, you know, Fast vehicles and the Mephiston and the, the parking lots and yeah. you know, all that stuff and then she just spam and they just they were relentless like they wouldn't let up you know it wasn't like yeah it's it's not fun like, hey, let's have a friendly game all the time and you know some I could find other guys that would though but um, that's when you proxy your army is Tau that's all they ever brought you know was you said the T word I know Chris allows it I allow okay. I don't judge okay I'm not so if you proxy you, you your army is, as Tau do you think uh, Oh, this space race is—he's a fire no, warrior. You know, I, I do fight like 
it's tough because in my earlier days, you know, I had that I had that problem where I came across a less than positive situation in some instances, having to do with uh, repetitively like one army, like I kept, I kept getting. And this was this was right before Grey Knights hit, right? Oh, so gosh. Um, in in fifth when they you know and was, there's only the two Storm Raven options and all this. Right. And so and so nowadays, like I fight to try to like get over my old hatred is tough. Like, I still, I'll catch myself on, you know, on YouTube, posting the comment being like, haha, you know, silly blood angels, you know, and all this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other thing, the other thing too, it is tough, because uh, it's primarily Dark Angels players, so um, it was tough to see Space Hulk to get taken away from the Deathwing, um, which, to me, that's a Deathwing game, like, it just makes no sense. Yeah. Ways, that it's a blood angel game. But, I see the park itself is gorgeous, right? And the Blood Angels are, they're a great army. They're a great looking army. And um, so it's tough sometimes when you have old experiences that, uh, yeah. that you know, because it is, it's like, uh, I don't know if you guys know about her Prince 40K. Yep. Yep. Uh, uh, audio uh, cast that he does. And he talks about the social contract um, a lot. <laughs> and I am totally, totally down with it, you know, that, it's not, you know, there's room for competitiveness and there's room for pure history, you know, overkill and, and all this stuff. Like, if you want, I know, like, Matt's not really interested in reenacting, you know, famous battles, but some people are. Yeah, um, yeah. And uh, I think you even mentioned that before a couple times yeah. where you're like, really into it. Like, if you wanted to redo part of Istvan, yeah. you could do it. You know, or that'd be awesome. The Fall of Malantai, wouldn't yeah. that be kind of pretty awesome? Oh, yeah, that'd be freaking great. That'd be awesome. So, even even doing like even doing a scenario like um, like D Day, Omaha Beach, where you had you know uh, Eldar fortifications and a wave upon wave of Imperial Guard, and the scenario is is that there's only maybe you know two thousand points of Eldar versus basically unlimited ten thousand points of Imperial Guard, and they're just you know the Imperial Guard have to make their way through by the end of like you know six turns or something like that, and they have to get past. You know the bunker heads or whatever, right? And where they're just getting completely decimated, and it's just it's just a, a game of numbers kind of thing, and you know just kind of recreating something fun like that, right? Yeah. Although I'm sure you know the actual Omaha Beach wasn't any fun, but I mean you know <laughs> <coughs> you know, but but you know what I mean, like recreating <laughs> well, these kind of scenarios. I've heard I've heard that Sword Beach was actually a party. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> I'm sure a lot of Britain Canadians wouldn't agree with that I don't one. Know, I'm 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 so young and removed from. Uh, the actual World War II that, um, yeah, I could say stuff like that and it seems like humor, but I'm sure those guys, yeah, those old guys would be like, ah, son of a bitch, he's not, I was gonna say, not my friends died with their face in the mud so that you could have freedom, so you could talk about it, exactly. Unfortunately, it's a Scottish guy saying that half his face is painted blue. Yeah, uh, there's a, a great series of books, uh, by Rick Atkinson called the uh, Liberation Trilogy. And um, it takes it take it'll take you through the United States entering into World War II. The first book covers North Africa. The second is going up through Italy, and then the third book starts with D-Day and works its way towards the end of the war. And uh, like Saving Private Ryan will give you just an absolute visual taste of just how awful it is. Rick Atkinson can do that in his books. Yeah, and they're fantastically written. I've got um, a friend of mine, Brian's. Uh, a retired lieutenant colonel in the army and he's read through those books and he, he says hands down they're the best uh world war ii books that he's read mm. and, sh and has shared those with his friends so mm. um and uh, one of the main characters that they'll talk about is teddy roosevelt jr and his impact on it because he the guy was he was in he had he died of a heart attack during the war but he's out on Omaha Beach. I forget. It might have been Omaha. But he's out on one of the beaches with his cane, just kind of hobbling around, trying to get guys to get up off the beach and get going while bomb, like, you know, mortars are landing around him and machine guns are blazing. He was fearless. It's just, it just one of those neat stories you never would have heard about because nobody ever covers it. But no, well, there's a recommendation. He was kind of a beast of a man himself, so I'm sure. Yeah. His, his son was incredible. Absolutely incredible. So, yeah. And then... <laughs> They found out through a bit of, you know, like pop, pop culture TV or whatever, I mean, that, that he uh, actually was involved in a fist fight while he was president. <laughs> that sounds like Teddy Roosevelt. Yeah, <laughs> probably. Like, like it, it was like a sanctioned fight. Like, yeah. Like a, like, oh, 
it was a sporting match then. You it know? was you know, <laughs> it was just you know a hundred years ago. We just did it. You know, and you're like, <laughs> they were, life was much different a hundred years ago. There was just a different outlook. Um, completely unrelated. We were talking about uh, cost overruns on the Bay Bridge in San Francisco. They uh, connect San Francisco with Oakland, and they've built a new span. And they're, it's taking them a long time to take down the old span because some uh, comrades or some other seabirds have built nests on the old Bay Bridge, and they have to get the birds off and re-nest it somewhere else before they're allowed to take it down because of environmentalists wanting to make sure that these birds aren't impacted. Right. And it's like, you know what? I could have told you what happened 80 years ago if this was happening. They got a bunch of Italians out there with some shotguns and they would have fixed that problem in a weekend. <laughs> and nobody would have thought twice about it. It's just it's a different be, age we live in. It's got to be worse in California too because yeah. it's, everything's so much more progressive, yes. I guess. You know, it's like, <laughs> everything's just so much more. Yeah. Why, 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 yeah. Is, why is there a quotation around progressive? Because he, he couldn't think of a nicer word. <laughs> that's, that's really the right word, but I don't. I certainly don't want to sound anything but positive, right? So <laughs> I, believe, I believe if you were listening to Click and Clack, they'd say wackos. A yeah, bunch well, of wackos. Just, I don't know. We'll keep it light. Yeah. Okay. So then, to, let's let's, let's go. Roll let's, it right back yeah, in. let's go 180. Okay. You Did you it? have any kind of painting-related type question, hobby question? Or was there anything on your mind that you said, okay, I've got Chris's ear for the next so-and-so amount of time. So-and-so amount of time. What, um, again, what's, his, what's his deal? You like, know, Chris, I have way too much <laughs> stuff that I could show you. But um, I will show you a couple. Okay, yeah, show. Maybe show. One, maybe one thing here. Please. Let's see if I can. I don't know if that's actually going to help. but uh, right. So I've been working on, I actually, besides Dark Angels is my first army, but I've got a lot more progress going on a couple of Space Marine allies, and then I run Tyranids. Uh, when I can, and then of course I have some Black Reach, I have orbs, such as Chaos, and random stuff, so I'm always working on different things, and um, it's tough for attention, but I get on to like a single model like this uh, Sergeant Teleon here. Okay. And so I don't He's not in the books no more, eh? What is it? He's not in the books no more, eh? He is. Oh, is he? he? Is. Oh. So, um, I thought they took only him out. Ultramarines can take him still. There, it's, it's very... The way the Codex is written, um... They, he's an upgrade to a scout squad in the Codex. Uh, and then the only way that they really show you that he's Ultramarine specific is they put a little icon on his box. They, gotcha. don't, they don't actually write it anywhere. But uh, if you look in the in the Space Marine Codex, it'll say uh, whichever image is on their, on their little caption, that's the only number that takes that. So um, that was a bit of a bummer. I thought at first I could actually put him into other scout squads. I had a large Raven uh, force I'm working on, and I thought I could... Because it says that he's seconded other chapters and things like this, I thought I could second them. So, right. It won't work out that way, but I was working on Ultramarines anyway, so um, have them as some allies as well. And uh, Ooh, lens flare. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Let me see if I can. Make no, don't, no, no apologies. You can actually guy. see no. him. Um, can you see that at all? I can. He's not quite hit the phone. Oh, no, I can, I can see he's a little blurry there, right? Yeah. Just a little bit. Let me see. Sorry. Do you have a sheet of paper? You know, I may just, I may just eventually, I may just go and send you an uh, email about this guy. Okay. Or maybe the next you know, day. Of the... No, you know what? Send me, send me an email of a picture up, nice, nice and clear of him, and uh, like in the next, you know, 24 hours kind of thing, and mm -hmm. I will incorporate it into this video. I'll, because I'm gonna edit this video, so you know. Oh, you're right on. Yeah. Well, so um, basically, I'm working with him, and uh, I've decided that I've made his. His flesh on his head. He's a bear, a bear-headed guy, a bit too pale. Okay. So it's it's very it's definitely one of the pieces I've been happiest with as far as some of my my fleshy head work. <clears throat> it's, I think it's quite good as far as my quality of it. But he he looks like he's been inside rather than outside. Oh, okay. So, yeah. And this is you want him to look weathered and. Just, yeah, he's like the greatest. He's been out in the sun, and you know he's. Right, he's like he'd be inside. So uh, <laughs> I think he's gonna have a little bit of tan on his head. <clears throat> so I'm gonna try to darken it, and I have been using uh, I've been using more shades for flesh, um, going with the with the white base, and then using like the right one flesh shade technique, and then either either focusing on that or using it as a type of base for other layers. Okay. And I did that with him. Uh, I did. I actually did a stark ceramite white. Uh, okay. He's a he's a black prime mini, and then I did a ceramite over his flesh. Okay. And then I used Reichland, and um, 
then I just went in with other colors that I liked. Like, I do a little bit with Dwarf, but I do a little bit with uh, Elf Flesh as the older GW colors. Yeah. You, you never uh, gave him a base coat of, say, like, Cadian Flesh and then Reichlin? I don't have... Let me see. I don't think I have Cadian anymore. I do have the old white lid base colors you can see here. Probably. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm trying to think of what the hell that old flesh color was. Uh, Talarn, Talarn flesh. Okay. Which I think is bronze the old flesh? Bron- foundation no, flesh. flesh but right. now I just have, like, I'll use either the uh, the Vallejo basic skin, or I'll use, um, like, I'll use the right one over white, like I said, or I'll use. I used to go with the dark flesh, the war flesh, elf flesh. Yeah, yeah. Right. Go that route. Yeah. S- sort of progression. Yeah, because that usually gives you a good kind of uh, mid-tone flesh. Uh, you know, it, it's still, it, it can still be quite dark, especially if you shade with Reichlin. Um, I wouldn't, like if you were going to shade with Reichlin, something dark like that, or even Agrax. Agrax is also another one that you can use to shade. Um, I wouldn't do like an entire wash over the entire face. I would do it, uh, apply the wash very deliberately uh, at the cheeks and the uh, sockets of the eyes. You know, uh, up near the temple, the jawline, under the chin, you know what I mean? And be very deliberate as to where you're laying the shade. And just uh, apply it more like a thin layer. Because you know how, like, it's a very clear shade. And you basically can just tint the surface. And that's all you're looking to do with that shade, right? And, like, a guy a model like that, I'm pretty sure he has, like, um, like ridges on his forehead. Like, his, like his, his uh, brow is furrowed. He's, he's pretty smooth. Is it? Oh, okay. There's a slight one, and there's a, uh, there's a service stud. So, um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so, like, uh, applying those uh, shades very deliberately like that saves you a lot of time as well because that way you don't have to go back in with your base color and try and reestablish any of that base color again because you can lay down, say, for example, you know, the Cadian flesh tone or a mid-tone flesh tone and then be very deliberate with the Reichlin and apply it in the eye socket and the cheeks, you know, uh, just under the nose, you know what I mean, and uh, yeah. deliberately I'm not, I'm apply not it. The eyeballs, either, um, because the more the more I look at a lot of the flesh heads, the more I see. Well, the eyeball it's not very realistic to see the eyeball on a human sized face at that sort of distance that is implied, you know. Yeah, well, the eye should be really small. Yeah, yeah. And I do like just the just the shade effect it gives a lot of times. In fact, he looks better than some of the ones without his eye done, and some of the ones I've done with an eye. But uh, but I guess you know because of the technique you're talking about, when I hear. Um, this is very similar to advice that you've given a lot of times with the washes and shades and stuff like that. And so that's very good. I think one of the things that we don't hear a lot out here is what do you do when you mess that up? <laughs> <laughs> so let's say like I'm doing that technique, for instance, right, um, on here, and, and maybe I just got a little too heavy with the wash uh, and the set and the other. You know how like with the shade or the inks or stuff like that, they'll leave like a little watermark line. Yeah or their heaviest, and it, it's so fast. Yeah. It's so fast when it starts to leave that, and then right. so you have to go back yeah. and redo your whole... Well, if, if, if you've left it really thin, and if you're really, really fast, you rinse off your brush really fast, and wipe most of the moisture off the brush, but leaving it still very damp, and you can use the brush and wipe that layer off really quickly. Because even though it's starting to leave that watermark like that, it's still not all the way dry, especially if you're really, really fast with it. If yeah. you've laid too much shade down... Okay, and you know you you want to uh, you don't want to move it around and try to spread it out more, and you just want to get that excess out. Well, you just simply just wash your brush off real fast, draw off its moisture, and then just like a little syringe, just use the bristles to suck that excess Can't wash out. Sure. You know, <clears throat> you know, it kind of use it like like a syringe. It just go like you just touch the bristles to the area, and it the bristles will just draw that excess. Uh, <clears throat> shade or wash or whatever it'll draw it right out of that area and you can be real fast like that but yeah when you when you often make a mistake it's better to correct it right then and there as fast as possible rather than getting frustrated or you know putting them all down and you know what I mean it's, so, ah it sucks and I'll do yeah, it later let me ask you this real quick then because I know one of the ways that you can really help um, if you know especially when you don't have as much practice doing any particular technique and you're worried that maybe my hand's not steady enough or I haven't dealt with that before, you know, what happens, that you're going to want to perhaps pick a stage uh, of your paint process, right, and do a varnish to, say, protect your foundation, protect, like, your your separating of base coats and stuff like that? Yeah. I mean, is that something that you do a lot or do you find well, that it's... Well, you, you, you do it a lot in airbrushing, 
for example, um, if you were doing, uh, let's say, uh, let's just say, for example, the hairbrush or the hairspray method, where you've laid a, a rust color down on the model, you've laid the hairspray down on the model, and then you've laid the base color down, and then you've scratched that base color away so that leaves that rusty color, and then you seal the model, and then you continue your highlighting process. Uh, when you're airbrushing, you often will do that multiple varnishing phase. Mm -hmm. When we're brush painting, it's not very often you'll do that. But I can see the advantage of doing it because, let's say, for example, uh, you you were blending the armor of a model, say a space marine, okay? You blended all his armor and you got ni really nice transitions going. So then you lay down a nice satin varnish or a, a gloss varnish. And then you wanted to dry brush, say he has a fur cloak or something like that. But it comes in a lot of areas, it comes close to the armor. Well, if you were dry brushing that texture of the cloak, and then you end up getting a little bit, uh, you know, overzealous with your dry brushing, and you end up hitting some of the areas of the armor, well, you have that gloss coat there so that you can quickly draw off that paint and wipe it off that shiny, smooth surface without destroying your previous work, right? So yes, I can see the benefit. I've never done it myself as, I don't know. I ju it just seems, it seems a little unnecessary you know, but I mean, like the scenario I just described, you know, it's that seems like an ideal situation and it seems like something that would occur for everybody. Right. Because when we're painting space greens, like, for example, space wolves, and we want to get a good color blend going on in the armor, but we want to have that rich texture on the fur. Right. So you got to dry brush that, but you want to blend the armor, get a nice smooth blend. You know what I mean? And so you want to protect the two and, yeah, you know. Without pa painting the pieces separately. Or sometimes that's not even an option, right? Because it could be a, like a fine cast or something where, you know, the parts are already molt sculpted together and you, there's, there is there is no separation. And It is tough because I have, that, I have that big problem. I'm not the type of painter that really enjoys painting a model that's all assembled. Um, yeah, like the single pieces. Of, there's a lot of division amongst the community over how that's done and what preferences are. And um, for me, a lot of times, like I'll take... Might be able to see it. So this is kind of like the stage for like a model I'll get to where, I know that's pretty far away, but he's got his base, his legs, his torso, and maybe, maybe the head. And, yeah. Right? Um, and then, you know, for like Space Marines, the backpack gets in the way. It's not like that for all models. Yep. So if I had IG or, sorry, Militarum, something like that, you can get away with it. Um, yeah. But there's some models like, for instance, uh, this guy right here, right? It's an old metal. Yeah, and he's pretty much one piece other than that arm, right? And, and I have to. Like, I was able to do his one arm and his backpack, right? Yeah. So, but, uh, and, and he needs to be upgraded as far as the brightness of the reds and stuff like that. But uh, it's, t it's tougher. Now, that's actually a pretty open model, right? But I, I get into stuff like I'm working on a Carnifex as well right here. Right. And um, if I'm trying to do, if I want to get... It's actually even tough, like, because I painted him with the legs on, with the torso like this. Yeah. And it's very hard to get inside. Uh, yeah. In Down into the leg, get your, even your base colors after the prime, you know, in there. So it's tough for me. I don't know if that's a problem for you with a lot of models or how you choose to do it. I've seen some of the tips and stuff like that where you've done it different ways. But. Yeah, most of the time, okay, like, you know how you're painting that Carnifex without its arms? Mm -hmm. Most of the times, I'll paint that thing with his arms on. Uh, yeah, uh, most of the time I'll uh, fully assemble a model. Uh, other than Space Marines, I will leave the backpack off. Most times, sometimes if I'm in a hurry, I'll leave the backpack on because I often will use, uh, you know, like the longer bristle brush, and I'll have the paint in a thin down state. And so all it takes is just simply placing the brush there, and then just you know turning the brush so that it's kind of fanning around and catching those areas, mm -hmm. and then that's it. And you know you move on, right? Because a lot of times. Especially with when we're painting gaming pieces, you know, we don't have to overthink right. a lot of the paint job. It's true, yeah. You know, and so, like, if you're having problems reaching that tiered belly, well, are you painting it to a display standard or are you painting it to a, a good tabletop standard? Right. Or are you just painting it, you know, just for giggles, right? And because really only you are the, are the one who's going to see that that area might not be covered as well as it could have been. True, yeah. You know, versus everybody else is going to look at that carapace and see the attention that you spent on the carapace rather than that little that little spot on the belly. That's true. And, like, this guy, for instance, and I'll send it to you to email so you get, uh, you know, for, for giggles in here. So um, 
he I've almost by accident gone with a non metallic metal type effect. And I know that uh, that's yeah. it's almost a dirty word <laughs> nowadays. Like so it's <laughs> overfill and N N M M, you know. Um, yeah. and, right. Um, but that wasn't the intention, but when I started looking at it with my highlighting pillar on top of the base, so because it's kind of like a Kraken, yeah. uh, the Krakens, uh, because that's a very easy tabletop. For anybody that wants to do tyranids, it's the fastest. I, I think it's either Behemoth or Kraken, personally, <laughs> because you can do it, and it's kind of like Matt's Caron as well. You get your your bone color, you slap yeah. a, a, not even a really careful wash on it, and then you just pick out the details, and you're almost done. Yeah. And for this guy, I get a, a really high contrast uh, Oshabti, on top of basically what I told you, and and if I if, it, if the transition's watery at the edge a bit, it almost has a non-metallic metal look to it. But it's actually <laughs> it's more like a cartoon. In fact, it's yeah, not, it's like that type of you know, coloration. But like you said, that there is a lot of dark shadow in there where the torso is is bent over, is hunched over. Yeah, and it almost works actually. Um, it's not the prettiest, most fantastic painting style. But especially for, for like a gaming piece, which this is actually for a friend of mine, um, not mine, because my guys are closer to Leviathan, um, and he's not a painter, and he doesn't care, he just wants to play some games. Like, it's, it's far better than he could achieve on his own, um, because he just doesn't paint, but like, it's far less than any type of competition standard, I guess. Yeah. It's really cool, it's like you were talking about in a way the brush, like 56, 7, something like this, you know, the different brush styles. Right. Um, that people have and uh, yeah so, it's it's okay. something it's something that's lacking these days especially with all the airbrushing everybody's doing yeah and i don't i don't have access to an airbrush that was one of the things i asked you about back in the summer right right and, uh, i still don't and it's tough for me because um and I, I think it's a tough for a lot of people out there because they just don't have dedicated workspace well, it, it's 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 not so much the workspace. It's just you got to you got to be able to justify the cost to yourself, right? Because essentially you're looking at it as an investment. Now, if you're painting stuff for buddies and money is changing hand, or you're trading, or you know what I mean, like there's something tangible exchange going between the guys, then yeah, you can adjust you can justify the investment in an airbrush. But like, if it's just for giggles, then yeah, you kind of have to only pick it up whenever you got the extra cash for it, kind of thing, right? And yeah, it's tough, and, uh, and that's one of the things that, that I've looked at, uh, is trying to do more with less, but not not just to do more with less, but to do it that you can't tell, right? Yeah, yeah. That would be, that would be like the holy grail of, of bodging the wargaming hobby, you know, and it's still <laughs> supporting the company, like I still want to buy models from Games Workshop, because another huge issue of the day is, you know, are you going to go buy pirate stuff, you know, and all that. And, uh, pirate stuff? You know, pirate, yeah, our... <laughs> Arr, me so like, you know, like, yeah, they, last they, night, yeah, the, the models from China um, and the Russian Federation. Oh god. Oh, like China, the, oh, the knockoff stuff. Models. Yeah, the counterfeit. Yeah, yeah. The, the whole the whole knockoff thing. That was something that was talked about in uh, Shrine Chaos actually yesterday. Yeah. And it's so tough for people got because there's actually there's actually even some little areas where you might you might try to get a loophole and it's like it's like okay, well, what about discontinued models? There's they don't exist anymore. Or like little little arms that they just don't make. They're completely out of stock. You can't buy them. And people are like, "Well, I might buy that." It's neither. But it's like you want to support the manufacturers because if you don't, they're not going to be around. Yeah. Um, and but that does mean buying usually at the premium cost. Right. And therefore, how do we, how do we make up for that? Especially for those of us that uh, that want to kind of have have it all in a way. You know, it's like we're not we're not rich. A lot of us. Um, and I'm not. Or we're not even not even well off, right? Yeah. You know? Don't even ask me. Uh, so, but, but we're but we're in the hobby, and it's it's really it's a really big thing for us. And we're really enthusiastic about it. So, how do you do more with less and still do your part for a small community? It's not a tiny community, but you know, small enough that it needs it needs the consumer support. On the other hand, you're going to invest all this money on these models, but how many years are they going to last you? Oh yeah. Yeah. And then, so, too, if you look at the resale market for armies that are actually treated with some care, like, if they're just, they're, they were taken care of, and uh, even old models, stuff like this, or maybe it's even rare, like, out-of-print stuff for people that used to play, and they haven't looked at it in a long time, and turn around and come to find out there's people that really desire to purchase, you know, those things off eBay, or somebody that's, that's painted a whole army, and they're yeah. just, for whatever reason, aren't into it. 
um, it's actually a product that holds its value pretty well. Yeah, yeah, yeah usually. Sale. For there, but there's there's two two sides to that for some strange reason. There's the unpainted, buying unpainted, you can still sell them for like uh, retail, even though they're fully assembled and right. as long as they're assembled well, right? Yeah, you can still get them at retail price because people want them unpainted, and you can also buy painted models that are painted really well for a really high price as well. And so yeah, it is kind of weird how these models have that value, but also their value. Is also based upon uh, how valuable they are in the game. Oh yeah, you know, absolutely. And you know, like it's it's you know, if something's useless in a codex, people aren't buying it, and people aren't going to be buying it online. Even counterfeits of it, they're not going to be buying it. Right. You know, the only, yeah. The only people buying that are the collectors. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. Well, so would you rather have, for instance, and you're not be able to see the details on this. It's a black figure. But this is the old asthma die. Yep. Metal asthma die. He's pretty killer. Yep. Would you rather have this one than the Minecast newer one that they came out with? Uh, I don't know. I would. It's it's not one of the figures that's aged poorly. As far as you know, a lot of the older metal figures, they look short or they're like real stocky. <laughs> yeah, like they've got weird proportions of them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know. Like, like Asterman? Whoa, what an awesome figure, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, pewter, like, the, the the argument of pewter versus, like, resin models, or even fine cast models, is the weight. It's the heft, the heft, the heft that the model has, right? Yeah, you've got a bunch of models, and you put yeah. metal washers under them, right. right, so that they have some weight to them. And I think that's what it is, is that tactile uh, experience with the model is that, you know, it needs that weight. And oftentimes, we equate that heaviness with the value. Yeah. And... True, you know, if it's heavier, then it, it's it's like gold. It's 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 valuable versus something that's light, and you can kind of just plink it across the table yeah. and give it a, a flick. Little flimsy thing. Yeah, it's a little right. plastic model. You can just give it a flick, yeah. and it goes. Don't forget across that if you drop it, the lightweight ones are probably going to bounce and do pretty much no damage. That's Whereas true. the metal ones, you'll bend them out of shape. They can break their arms off. Yeah, and broken pewter is a real pain to fix. Yeah, well, if you don't like work out for this for the same tier army that I'm working on for this guy, a friend of mine. He's got an old hot turn that's just all metal. And, and like, I've got an old semi, no, it's not here, but a uh, semi on a jet bike, right? And models like that, and not, not to mention people that have old metal vehicles. Yeah. And you're just like, man, because especially that hot turn, um, similar to the plastic one. The plastic one's in a couple more pieces, but it's, it's like these sides that go together, and then you have to fit it on the torso, and the torso has to fit the tail. And then <laughs> legs have to go on that, and then they have little spikes, and then you have the head, and all that's metal. Yeah. Absolutely, every bit of it. So you're talking about like twelve pins. Yeah, yeah. I like it's, it's a pin. pain. It's a pain. I, no, but you have to pin it. Though. I've done. It's I've necessary. done. You I've done metal models like the, the and plastic. I've done plastics, and I'll take plastic or resin any day of the week over metal. I can't stand working with metal, yeah. <laughs> especially especially with yeah. conversions. Yeah, if you want to convert, yeah, that's metal's a pain. In I've got. The a, I've, I've got a friend of mine. Who is the exact opposite? He plays War Machine, and he bought. He heard that War Machine was switching to resin models, so he started buying up all his War Jacks in the all metals because he loves the all metal models. Yeah. And so you know there is a a, a sub a subpopulation that just totally digs it. Yeah. I can't stand it because I hate gluing my fingers to the models, which is what happened every freaking time I was working with my dark my dark elves. You're using too much glue. Yeah, I definitely Maybe. was. <laughs> it's super glue is hard to work with because I mean, yeah. they're all the different ones you gotta put a glue in the joint a glue on the it for your nose yeah. you know the yeah. whole thing but so we didn't have the accelerators back then War Machine right yeah I don't no, but we don't talk about War Machine enough or say for instance Infinity or you know Wild sure. or stuff like this I feel, I feel like I feel like there's a lot of gamers out there that are sitting back going 40k again you know <laughs> It is. It's a huge yeah, but but even people who hate yeah. your Games Workshop, they're still tuning in. They do to yeah. to Games they Workshop can't. crap because well, they're gonna hate on it. The hot, yeah, that's true. They <laughs> need they need fuel for their hate, so they're constantly <laughs> tuning in to GW's YouTube channel <laughs> to hate on their stuff. I mean, well, well, for instance, I don't have anything against War Machine. In fact, if I played War Machine right now or Hordes, um, I could probably play a lot more games yeah. because there is if I if I go travel for a minute. There are War Machine players and players that I can hook up with. And that's probably the best reason to start playing it. 
Yep. It, it it's is actually popular. a really good game, too. I have, I have the, the best reason. reason why I will not play it. Oh, okay. It's not because I, dis- I don't dislike the game. Right? The gamers. It's a different game. Yeah, it is. But I, don't, I just don't like the miniatures. No, yeah, okay, that's a hard that's one, a too. That's important. Yeah, it, like, that, it took me a long time to get into War Machine 2 just for that reason. I, I don't uh, think that the Warjacks portion is a thing that I enjoy. It's just not. No. And they, to me, they do look kind of cartoonish and stuff like that. I think there is a room for it. It's, it's kind of, it's, it's a little of a mix between like a Japanese anime Gigantor style and Sorry. something like a, like a Mike Mignola <laughs> Hellboy type thing. And it's like... <laughs> Yeah, I think I think what it is about their jacks, because like, they're they're older sculpts, and the sculpts are just they're too soft. Like there's there's no hard details on the models, and they don't feel uh, realistic enough. In contrast to like the Warcasters and stuff, where they they have really kind of nice sculpts, but the jacks, you know, like there's there's no details in the pistons. It's like the, the boilers are just kind of like, blah. It's just like. It's cartoony, like a lot of flat, smooth surfaces. Yeah, you know, and there's just very good, good for new painters. Good, to, good for toothbrush is. blending, right? Yeah, it's good <laughs> yeah. for toothbrush blending, but come you know, on. And I'm certainly like, because I'm all for cross, cross game, cross uh, dressing. Yes. Oh, yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> I'm up for that too. No, no, no. Come Seems to be a lot of that going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A, lot, a lot of, of cross dressing. I, I was yeah. talking to a guy, and, and there was a story being related where, you know, like. People on one side, they were in one game. They were they were ridiculing people that were playing another game, you know, for, for whatever reason. You know, they were laughing. Oh, you play this, and I'm, like, mm-hmm. and I'm like, I don't I don't like that attitude. You know, I think even if I'm not a War Machine player, if I meet somebody that is, I'm gonna be like, that is awesome. Tell me all about it. I want to support you. And here's what I play. And maybe we can find some common ground. Maybe we won't play either one of these games, but maybe we'll play Infinity, um, something like that. And I just feel like that. I understand like the, the competition sometimes. I mean, because the yeah, some, War Machine's really like, competitive. Yeah, and, and we have to be cutthroat business here to compete. Yeah. Share. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah, well, I don't. Know. War Machine itself, the game, it's just a different. It, it attracts a different type of player, and yeah. you have to just come in with a different mindset. Yeah. And yeah. now I could see where War Machine players would ridicule GW players, yeah, uh, 40k players, well, because there's a lot more competition and it's a lot more ruthless. In War Machine than it is 40k. But the thing is, is like 40k players, I can remember like way back when, like, you know, the, the 40k players and the Warhammer Fantasy players, there was a great divide between those two. Yes, there was. You know, 40k players never touched Fantasy. Never, the the yeah. Square Basers, they, we never played the Square Base game. You know, we never played that. It, we're all about the tanks and Space Marines and stuff like that. You know, yeah. you know that? What's that? So I bet that was a problem for Chaos Demons players. Yeah, exactly, because so their models... Both, both. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Well, I mean, Jeez. back in the day, I when I bought my Greater Demons, they always came on square bases, even yeah. though I was using them for my 40k armies, yeah. you know? But, hey. It's, 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 it's stupid rivalries, and, you know, it's just, it's just division, and it's silliness, and it really doesn't it matter. Is, so, people yeah, like so, people so, are going to like what they like. It's yeah, simple. so that's the thing, is, like, I want to see... I want to see more of, you know, whatever games that they're, that they're playing stuff like this. But I guess, like, with Way of the Brush, for instance, um, is a really good outlet just for model hobby. Uh, yeah. For gamers in general, so uh, that's good. Well, and... Coming and, together a lot of times over... And I like helping stuff. promote other people, you know, and get their word out there and, you know, and stuff like that. And, you know, uh, I, I like the community and I think, you know, ha- like, even, like... Because, like, for example, I get paid to make tutorials, but I still encourage people out there to make their own tutorials and put up their own stuff out there because not all painters do everything the same. And maybe they do something a little bit better than maybe I'm doing. Maybe they're doing something a little bit more efficient than I'm doing. Or, you know, their color usage is maybe a little bit uh, more interesting than what I'm currently using. And so... I, I encourage it because you know it encourages growth and it, it you know if if it was up to Games Workshop they would be the only source of tutorials and they would have that complete lockdown and anybody else producing tutorials uh, you know would be garbage. Sure. Do you, do you think you think that's their? No, I don't think they want to bust into this market. They, they don't. They're not into the social media. No, they're not. They're not. They're definitely not. I don't yeah. Like, well, it's tough. Look, I I've had moments in my consumer life that I've, I've 
been not happy with them. And then I've had moments like right now, like where I think, well, that was silly. I mean, I don't, I don't know <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm expecting, you know, exactly. But Yeah, well, I mean, as long as you remember their business. Right. And they're they're and they're worshiping the almighty dollar. They, then, they, yeah, but they have and people are like, well, because I guess they're they're people are really hungry for like that interaction, right? Um, yeah. Like they turned like they have the Games Workshop NT. I think uh, a little video is actually I can't remember that guy's name. And he does their painting tutorials. Oh, but uh, Duncan. No, is that him? They're they're helpful. I mean. Yeah. No, they're they're good tutorials. And in fact, I I I always make the the slight jab. They're kind of like our tutorials, yeah. so, so you know. Yeah, I mean, he, it's kind of funny. Is their product, and I think um, there a lot of times the techniques are simplified, a bit more simplified. But you know, you, you think about their target, uh, their target audience, and you think about um, kind of the, the day and age that it is. Uh, yeah. With with how you have to approach the generalized public with any subject, um, you have to be very you have to be very clean. You have to be very basic. I mean. Gosh, there's so much potential for putting a foot wrong, you know, getting into some bad, bad publicity. Well, you see, you see, they, they took they took away games days, right? Do you see what they how they're calling it now? They they did change it, right? I saw some, but I don't remember it. It's it's called what Warhammer Fest? Is that it? Is that the one in the UK? Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's they, Games they Day. Now. That. Is that Games Day? That's Games Day now. Oh, that's Warhammer. That's the stupidest freaking name I've ever heard in my freaking life. It just. Like really, they closed out like Games Day. Games Day, like it was Games Day. Well, now it's it's Warhammer. Well, Fest. It's, you know, it's a focused audience, oh, right? My God. It's true. You're, you're there. It, games Day could be anything. Warhammer Fest is for Warhammer. There's no doubt in what. Games oh, Day is. so they lame. didn't want the War Machiners there. Oh. Yeah, the War Machiners came and ruined everything. Well, I only went to one Games Day. It was uh, Games Day 2012. Um, and the apocalypse. It was, not, it was not exactly what I expected. <laughs> it was it was a lot smaller. Expected. Yeah. Chicago. And um, I didn't see anybody there. I wasn't. I wasn't too connected with the community back then. So I just kind of went. I went with my little brother, who my since bought his army because he doesn't play anymore. <laughs> you, you say it like you're remembering it, like he's he's lost to time, kind of thing. How old is your, how old is your little brother? <laughs> well, he's my he's my half brother, so he's uh, like nineteen twenty now. Okay, back so then, if, if he's half, six, that makes him nine or ten, right? No. I don't whoa, think we're getting into fractions now. Sorry. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. Not paid whoa. to think on weekends. And he didn't. And he didn't have towel. Was Raven Guard. Okay. Just the thank word. you. No, thank you for not using that T-word. <laughs> so well, yeah, there was, there was some some stuff there at the, at the games day where I was like, you know, and I got a chance to talk to uh, Alan Bly and Phil Kelly. Oh. And, yeah. But I didn't really know. I didn't really know anything about Phil Kelly. Like, I guess I had just ignored his pictures in the books and the magazines. Like I right. said. So yeah, I, didn't know who I was talking to sort of like I, I sort of did, but I sort of didn't, you know. Yeah, like the, like the old crew of Ga- of Games Workshop who are you know like they're like celebrities in this community is like Andy Chambers and Jervis uh, Johnson, Johnson. You know, yeah, Jess Gav Goodwin, Thorpe. Gav Thorpe. You know what I mean? Like these Gav are the guys Thorpe. who you know as soon as you see them, you know like they're recognizable right away. Oh, Thomas like, Pilner. Well, and I, I did recognize Alan Bly because that was right after it was Doom of My Mira had come out not too long before that, I had, and there was a big spread with him. And, all this about the Doom of My Mirror, which was Space Wolves and Eldar. Right. And, uh, that was really cool, by the way. But uh, it was weird. I think I ended up asking him like a, a stupid question, like something that you'd ask somebody when you were playing a game. You know, it's just like I did the same thing. <laughs> game day in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I love how you shouted that out. I did the same thing. Did the same thing. The same thing. You're not alone. <laughs> don't don't feel oh, embarrassed. Dude. Really quick, that reminds me, Chris, okay. because yes. one thing was happening there at that games day that I'll always remember. They were talking about me. Before was... Cody were interrupts me again. <laughs> 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 okay, they, okay. They had a game of Battlefleet Gothic going on. Sweet. Okay, yep. And you said that you'd show us your Corsairs. Oh, shoot, yeah, I forgot oh, all about those. Oh, mighty language. Oh, oh, yeah, said shoot. shoot. I said shoot. Oh, yes, I, 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 just, the other I just want to remind you, so okay. he's the yeah. before. one day you bring your Corsairs. I will. No, Banana. next way of the brush, I will. Banana. I was actually what? interested in that. I saw a guy had done a custom Tyranid High Fleet for uh, Battlefleet Gothic. And I was like, man, that is so cool. I would yeah. love to play a Tyranid High Fleet Battlefleet Gothic. I no, an entire Bat- Battlefleet Gothic space. was a fun game. It was it had a really kind of Fleet simplified type rule set to it. Oh. It's kind of like epic, but um, 
you know, it was it was fun, and you know, it, like it, it would have been great to play more incorporated kind of games where you had Battlefleet Gothic game leads into an epic game, leads into a 40k game, yep. kind of you know, and you play these kind of massive campaigns. Could you imagine? Could you imagine the narrative campaign with the Battlefleet Gothic interlude? Oh right? yeah. And and gosh, you would just you would have like a version of a movie, in fact. Yeah. So. Gosh, that would be. You need to talk to Matt and be like, "Hey, do we have access? How much Battlefield Gothic can we get to?" Because think about <laughs> that. You know, think about that option for. I don't. I don't know if he wants to pay for Battlefield. I don't even know if he's ever played Battlefield Gothic. Okay, you know what? It's just better to ask for forgiveness than it is to ask for permission. Well, no, so make it happen. You have a like the Google Glass. Right? So if anybody Google Glass. Here, yeah, just tell you. You know, they could just come in like it's a bat wrap or whatever. But uh, I'll yeah. give you bacon. Bacon. I got something to prove. Bacon. Cook it up? No. Oh, bacon Six minutes battle this time about seven? Yeah. Bacon battle fleet. Yeah. 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 We have two boxes. You want some? This, this place smells like burnt bacon. It's, it's, it smells like... Bacon, burritos, and Timbits. Bacon, burritos, and Timbits. <laughs> so, anywho, Ryan, uh, it was great talking to you today. Absolutely. I think, I think we're going to wrap it up right about now. And, yeah, so, anytime you, you want to, you know, sit down and chat again, um... Of course, this goes for everybody who's who's tuned in to watch this. That, you know, um, I'm on Skype. My Skype's in, in the description below, and you know, shoot me a message. Say, hey, Chris, uh, maybe next so and so we'll sh you know we'll talk for ten minutes to an hour to an hour and a half. I don't even know how long we've been talking today. Cody Rue and Drewski. Cody Rue. Oh, Cody Rue here is Andrew. I was looking at that screen. And I, was <laughs> I can't see your feet, so I don't know if yeah. No. So, I was doing a, no, wow, okay, the crazy actually, guys. Before you, before you cut me off, shameless plug for wargamers that can reach my area. Yeah. No. Way you can because... And shoot me a link so I'll put it in. The, I'll put it in the screen as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. I'll do it. Send me an email with the pictures and uh, that link, and I will. Okay, go ahead. No, your your area. Promote your area, please. Go. My area. No, no, that's it. Um, oh. I'm, in the, I'm in the East Tennessee area, uh, East? Knoxville area. And so I was. I have a couple of buddies that I can play with infrequently, but uh, pe especially people in Knoxville, Tennessee. Knoxville, Tennessee. Okay. So anybody in Knoxville, Tennessee, uh, shoot a link over nice to Ryan Reziel. What's your full handle? Reziel Wargaming. On YouTube now it, it's switched, so it's Reziel Wargamer X. Yeah, that's it. Wargamer X. It's really long. I don't know why Google made me do that. Like. I think I think that there's parts of technology I don't understand properly that <laughs> around that, but I didn't. Oh, my wife's calling me. Well, have you um uh -oh. have you subscribed to the? Uh, She's calling. Have you subscribed that, to the channel of the I'm in trouble World now. Wide, uh -oh. Warp uh -oh. wide uh, Warp Wide I, Web. Warp Wide Web. Warp Wide Web. Uh, Thavian, no, who's who's that? in the? That's Thavian's channel. Is it? Yeah. Okay. So it's no, www no. for Warp Wide Web. Uh, check them out. I, I'm w? pretty. W. W? w? No, W. Uh. Oh, so sorry. W, w uh, would be two U's together. Right, so you're not. No, uh. Sorry. You're, you're, you're getting this Northern Canadian kind of accent here. To, take off, well, eh? It's yeah. coming from okay. the Californian take here, actually. Off. Oh, take off, eh? Yeah. Um, check, yeah, check out. I know, Thavian's from, I know Thavian's from Tennessee. I don't know what part. I know he okay. goes, I know Hobby Lobby is a, I don't know where the nearest Hobby Lobby is to you, but I know that's like the gaming store he goes to. Probably a Hobby Hobby Town. I know. I know. There was a group in Middle Middle Tennessee. Okay. But I don't know if they still exist. It might have been Hobby Town. It, right in the mountains. I'm. I'm in. I'm right next to Smoky Mountain. I actually live in the Sevierville area, which is a very popular. Uh, Gatlinburg, Tennessee, is a very and Pigeon Forge. They're very popular destinations for a lot of people in the North and Midwest. Okay. Uh, we get a lot of Canadians, actually. In fact. And, uh, is, are Are there any moonshine distilleries in your area? Well, they can't yeah, really talk about it. Since the past, since the past five years, and um, a couple of reality I, TV shows was, later. Professionally, I was a bartender for like six years in the area. Okay. And so, um, so I did know a lot about that. And in fact, you know, <laughs> I know about about the whole thing because it's quite difficult to yeah. work stuff. But it's a really good area, so say for like a convention because so much stuff goes on here already. I had I I'd even thought about looking at you know putting out feelers for stuff like that, and seeing how that works, but. Uh, Moonshine and Wargaming. Yeah. That, that sounds like a channel right it there. Could be, it could be a, You could a convert that to a biker gang, too. And actually, you know, Brush for Hire is really close <laughs> to me as well. They're on... Yeah, he's in Carolina, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've, I've chatted with him a couple times, but that's about it, so... Yeah. I don't see too much out of that guy these days. No. Next time you're talking to him, we'll ask him what the hell's going on. Yeah. They're, see, they're, I think they're building terrain and stuff. 
Oh, are they? Yeah. I don't know. That laser cutter. That, that Necron terrain? Yeah. No, I like the Eldar one. The we, Eldar. We, yeah, we have the Eldar set here. That's awesome. Yeah, and the Necron. And Steve's, Steve's army? Pretty dang impressive. Yeah. Well, until you take a close look at it, and then you can say, oh, Steve, what'd you do? <laughs> Steve's an <laughs> awesome painter. <laughs> I know, I just did see Well, it's true. <laughs> Seen, I think the only thing that I've seen really up close is maybe like his Raven Knight and the uh, yeah, no, no, Marcy or whatever. And what, what the really impressive thing is, is how fast he got them done. Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. He'll paint 20 guys in a night and have it look professionally done, whereas I get one guy half done with an airbrush. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, see, I'm like you, Drewski. It takes me forever, man. Yeah. <laughs> was, I, Steve was telling this me This is yesterday. what my hate relationship uh, with uh, painting. With shape? Relation shape. Yeah. Hi, oh, you have a relationship. <laughs> relationship. Yeah, relationship. I need more coffee. I've heard it both ways. <laughs> Relationship. Okay, so. Wait. Ryan. What? Later. And remember, always. Take care of your brushes. Take care of your brushes. Take care That's of right. your brushes. And they will take care of you. And they will take care of you. They will take care of you. It will. Mine are a little cheap. <laughs> but there's I can, there's I can still hear them. Do. They're like army ants of brushes. They lift weight. <laughs> <laughs> they lift themselves. They, they are the Drewski of brushes. Uh. The Drewski. <laughs> I, I they have brushes have to, with biceps. I gotta go bunt, bench press something now. Go. <laughs> I got a truck outside. I, I, I thought you were gonna press. say butt press. But Dave, no, Dave, I'm gonna say bunch. In the weight room right now. There we go. Let's go. Alrighty. So again, guys, want to sit down and have a chat over Skype? Link is in the description below. And uh, oops, crap, wrong link. <laughs> Ryan, just give us a send off. Like, like you're riding off into the, the distance. My Tyranid Thorn effects with no arms. Oh, we'll now, a baby. Now give it a voice. <laughs> like you're reading a T. Yeah, dude. Okay, what is it? Yeah, what does a Tyranid sound like to you? <laughs> <laughs> there, I, I, I couldn't have done that any better, and we're out of here. Oh my god. <laughs> that, that, oh, honey, the cat's at the back door. Could you open it for him, please? Monkeys. It's monkey speak for adios. Adios. <laughs> Burritos. <laughs>